trust has always been at the heart of progress. It's how ideas take flight, from test to triumph. But trust also asks us to believe in one another. And that's why trust has to be earned. It's earned by relentlessly working together to solve the most important challenges and drive results. That's why, as we advance into the AI future, trust has to lead the way. So yes, we've built a roadmap we deliver on, on time. Yes, we build for the open ecosystem. And yes, we've built the broadest AI portfolio with CPUs, GPUs, and FPGAs. But of all the things we build, trust is the most important. Please welcome to the stage, Dr. Lisa Su, Chair and CEO. Good morning. How's everyone doing? It is great to be back here in Silicon Valley with so many friends, press, analysts, partners, and especially all of the developers who are here today. And a big welcome to everyone who's joining online from around the world for our Advancing AI 2025. Now, it's been an incredibly busy nine months since our last Advancing AI event. We launched lots of new AI data center, PC, and gaming products. But today, we have so much exciting news to share with you. I'd like to go ahead and get started. Now, you guys know us well. At AMD, we're really focused on pushing the boundaries of high performance and adaptive computing to help solve some of the world's most important challenges. And frankly, computing has never been more important in the world. I'm always incredibly proud to say that billions of people use AMD technology every day. Whether you're talking about services like Microsoft Office 365, or Facebook, or Zoom, or Netflix, or Uber, or Salesforce, or SAP, and many more, you're running on AMD infrastructure. And in AI, the biggest cloud and AI companies are using Instinct to power their latest models and new production workloads. And there's a ton of new innovation that's going on with the new AI startups. For example, life sciences company 310 AI uses MI300X to train a model that turns simple text prompts into novel proteins to really help accelerate drug discovery. Our versatile AI adaptive SOCs are being used to build more efficient 5G networks and improve automotive driver safety. And Resin is bringing AI to PCs, enabling more intuitive, responsive, and more powerful experiences. Now, since ChatGPT launched a few years ago, the pace of AI innovation has been unlike anything I've seen in my career. And in 2025, it's only gone faster. We've seen the emergence of more powerful reasoning models, the rise of agents, really growing momentum in real-world use cases that are actually starting massive scale deployments. And it's clear that we're entering the next chapter of AI. Now, training is always going to be the foundation to develop the models. But what has really changed is the demand for inference has grown significantly, driven by more capable models and new use cases that are increasing AI usage. We're also seeing an explosion of models. So of course, you have you know, the new frontier models from folks like OpenAI and Google. But you also have open models from Meta and DeepSeek and many others. And we're also seeing now a surge in new specialized models that are built from everything from healthcare to finance to coding to scientific research. And when you look over the next few years, one of the things that we see is we expect hundreds of thousands and eventually millions of purpose-built models, each tuned for specific tasks, industry, or use cases. And as AI does more complex tasks like reasoning, you expect agents to become more capable, it drives significantly more compute, which frankly is great for all of us. 
Now let me talk a little bit about agentic AI. You know, agentic AI actually represents a new class of user. One thing that is always on, constantly accessing data, looking at applications, looking at systems to really make decisions and really work autonomously. They need high performance GPUs to generate insights in real time, but that's really only part of the story. What we're seeing now is as agentic AI activity increases, all of those agents are now also spawning a lot of traditional compute going to high performance CPUs. And just think about it. What we're actually seeing is we're adding the equivalent of billions of new virtual users to the global compute infrastructure. All of these agents are here to help us, and that requires lots of GPUs and lots of CPUs working together in an open ecosystem. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the market. Um, when we were here last year, we said that we expected the data center AI accelerator TAM to grow more than 60% annually to $500 billion in 2028. And frankly, for many of the analysts and folks, you know, at the time, that seemed like a really big number. People were like, do you really think it can be that big, Lisa? And I said, well, you know, that's what we're seeing. Uh, and what I can tell you, based on everything that we see today, that number is going to be even higher, exceeding 500 billion in 2028. And most importantly, we always believe that inference was actually be the driver of AI going forward. And we can now see that inference inflection point. With all the new use cases and reasoning models, we now expect that inference is going to grow more than 80% a year for the next few years, really becoming the largest driver of AI compute. And we expect that high performance GPUs are going to be the vast majority of that market because they provide the flexibility and programmability that you need as models are continuing to evolve and really algorithms are moving so fast, you want that programmability in your compute infrastructure. Now, the other thing that we see is AI is also moving beyond the data center, from intelligence systems at the edge to PC experiences. And we expect to see AI deployed in every single device. Now, to enable all of this, you don't have any one architecture that is the right answer. So I like to say there's really no one size that fits all. What you need is the right compute for each use case, and that's exactly what we're focused on. Our strategy is really focused on three key principles. First, we're delivering a broad portfolio of compute engines so customers can match the right compute to the right model and the right use case. Second, we're investing heavily in an open developer-first ecosystem. And you're going to hear us talk about open a lot today. We're really supporting every major framework, every library, every model to bring the industry together in open standards so that everyone can contribute to AI innovation. And third, we're delivering full stack solutions. We're building, we're forging partnerships. You're going to hear from some of our partners about our ecosystem today to really put all of these elements together. So now let me just give you a little bit of color. From a portfolio standpoint, we offer the most complete suite of computing elements end to end for this vision. That includes CPUs, GPUs, DPUs, NICs, FPGAs, and adaptive SOCs. No matter where AI runs or how much compute you need, AMD has the right solution. Next, Let's talk about open. There are a lot of developers in this audience and online, so this is really talking to you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming today. And we believe an open ecosystem is actually essential to the future of AI. AMD is the only company committed to openness across hardware, software, and solutions. And when you just take a look back, some of the most important breakthroughs in tech actually started out closed. If you think about things like um, early networking protocols, Unix operating systems, and even mobile platforms. But the history of our industry shows us that time and time again, innovation truly takes off when things are open. Linux surpassed Unix as a data center operating system of choice when global collaboration was unlocked. 
Android's open platform helps scale mobile computing to billions of users. And in each case, openness delivered more competition, faster innovation, and eventually a better outcome for users. And that's why for us at AMD, and frankly for us as an industry, openness shouldn't be just a buzzword. It is actually critical to how we accelerate the scale, adoption, and impact of AI over the coming years. Now, we also recognize that these AI systems are getting super complicated, and full-stack solutions are really critical. So to deliver full-stack AI solutions, we've significantly expanded our investments over the last few years, both organically and through strategic acquisitions and investments. We're very happy to say that we recently, recently closed our acquisition of ZT, giving us new capabilities in rack and data center scale design that are becoming extremely useful for what we're doing next. And we've also strengthened our software stack, acquiring leaders like Nod.ai, Mipsology, Silo AI. And in the last several weeks, we announced adding the Brium and the Lemini teams to AMD. And we're also investing broadly in the AI ecosystem. Over the last, few year, over the last year, we've actually done more than 25 strategic investments that have been a great way for us to build new relationships and also support the AI software and hardware leaders of tomorrow. So let's talk a little bit about customers. We have tremendous momentum in the data center. Since launching in 2017, Epic has transformed the data center. Today, Epic is trusted by the world's largest cloud providers and businesses to run their most important workloads. Epic powers everything from hyperscale services to enterprise data centers, supporting the most important workloads with leaders in financial services, healthcare, media, and manufacturing. And our momentum is just accelerating. We exited the last quarter with a record 40% market share, and we believe with AI and high-performance compute, there's a lot more room for us to grow. In AI, MI250X and MI300A enabled the exascale supercomputing era. I'm very happy to say, actually this week, uh, there was a new top 500 list that was released, and AMD powers the two fastest uh, supercomputers in the world, so that's pretty cool. And thank you. And with MI300X and 325, we've extended that leadership to Gen AI with large-scale internal and cloud deployments at Microsoft, Meta, Oracle, and many others. And I'm happy to say we've added a lot of new instant customers in the last nine months. Today, seven of the top 10 model builders and AI companies are using Instinct in their data centers. Leaders like OpenAI, Meta, XAI and Tesla, innovators like Cohere, Luma, and Essential, and many, many more. You're going to hear from several of them. They're our guests here today, and they'll tell you a little bit about how we work together. Now, as powerful as our hardware is, it's truly the software that enables their full potential. And I hear from lots of you as developers on what we can do better in software. I can say that I hear you. And our Rockham software stack continues to make just incredible progress. We're really focused on broadening the coverage for AI models, accelerating the pace of our releases, and really setting a north star of a developer-first mentality with Rockham. When you hear me talk to our engineers, what I say is it is all about the developer experience. It's all about what you guys say. And this is our guiding principle. So you're going to hear a lot about that from Bomsi today. And then for those of you uh, who are going to be able to stay with us this afternoon, we have um, a ton of developer content to just show you how you can really use um, AMD and Rockham.